Hey everybody, coming back to, actually we're going a little forward once again, we're going to August of 1942, and what would be known to history as the Moscow Conference, that is where Winston Churchill would finally meet Joseph Stalin for the first time, and they would be discussing what matters were going to be going on during the war, what British capabilities are, what was expected of them, and the, and the Red Army at the same time. Now, Stalin, understandably so, was thinking, Western Front, Western Front, Western Front. When is this finally going to happen? Are we going to get this hammered out? And Churchill, what, what Stalin didn't really know was literally two weeks after Pearl Harbor, at the end of December 1941, American and British military advisors got together and they put it on paper what was capable, what was possible to happen with military capability between the United, with the United States and Britain with the capabilities they had in 1942. Quite frankly, Churchill wasn't even willing to consider a cross-channel invasion. He, they couldn't talk to him about that at all. He, he just, nope, 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 not happening. But instead, what they did push, they did push, of course, the Germany first policy, Japan secondary, Germany first. Why are you sending resources over to fight the Japanese? We need you over here. And Roosevelt's like, easy, easy. We can do both, so don't worry about it. So, <clears throat> so it was also discussed that they had something else in mind to attack North Africa. And that, that was left, it was left at that. And Stalin really at the same time had no idea about any of this. And so in August of 1942, <clears throat> Churchill had the arduous task of meeting with Stalin for the sole purpose of telling him there was not going to be a second front that year. And he compared it to carrying a large lump of ice to the North Pole. He just thought it was a big waste of time. There was nothing good going to come of it. And so he kind of went out there with that attitude. And he and he arrived and you know he was met by Stalin, Molotov and others and he was he, Stalin gave him his own personal dasha just like Churchill had given his personal state to Molotov and, and they met and they sat down and talked and Churchill kind of said that we don't know if we're going to be able to pull this off this year and Stalin just gets annoyed saying well, why aren't you guys getting involved here? why aren't you guys doing something about this you know, it's, I mean, you guys can, you guys would easily attack, we could split, split Germany between the two of us. You could land six, uh, 30 divisions in France, that'll solve this problem. But there was a problem though. There wasn't uh, 30 divisions in the entire British Army. And there's a reason for that. I mean, um, Britain for the last 300 years, their strength, not taking anything away from their army, but their strength is in their navy. That's where they put all their money. They were the world policemen, keeping the world's waterway safe. That's where British money went, was to the navy. The army was there, but it was volunteered. So they didn't really have all those men to pull together. They didn't have 30 divisions. And so he said that the cross-channel invasion is not on the table this year, but that he said, why are you, Stalin was like, why are you so afraid of the Germans? And he says, I mean, what, what, what's up with you guys? And Churchill just says, have you thought about the fact that we fought Germany alone for more than a year? Churchill growled back and he's like, well, and your point? And so Stalin was pretty annoyed that the British weren't fighting very much. And so Churchill actually went so far as to say that he had <clears throat> worked out with the Americans another thing that was called Operation Torch. That would be where the Anglo-American troops, <clears throat> pardon me, would land in North Africa and at the beginning of 1940, uh, end of 1942 or 43, and they would take <coughs> the uh, area of the North African coast with the intent of what Churchill called, he drew a, a diagram, a picture of a large crocodile. And he referred to uh, Southern Europe as the soft underbelly of Europe. Like the nose is a spot that was too hard, you couldn't hit it in the nose. And so he had the idea of getting North Africa, going up to Italy, going up to Sicily, going up to Italy, and exposing them to the full brunt of the war, and attack, having that be the second front he was talking about. And Stalin, he technically got it. He, so yeah, he understood it all perfectly, what they had in mind, this will do this, this will do that, okay, great. So they go home, they sleep on it. Next morning they come in, Stalin hands them a memorandum saying, uh, uh, you're not keeping any of your promises here. First off, you know, and he, and he openly almost mocks the British. Like, okay, why are you guys so afraid of the Germans? You know, they, if your men found they actually fought the Germans, they might not be so bad. And they were just in Roosevelt, not Roosevelt, he wasn't even that. Churchill was getting ticked by this point because he was getting, he was feeling so personally insulted that, that Stalin was actually mocking him and mocking the army. He's like, you know, for the first time in history, the Royal Navy turns tail. And he just says, I only, Churchill said, I'm only burying this because of the valiant, gallant effort of the Red Army. And so, 
it ended from there and they were gonna have some sort of a, a dinner and things like that and Churchill was all ticked off. He was like, he went back to his room, but he had a, actually they had a dinner and Churchill was kind of sitting there all ticked off and annoyed. And so um, after a three hour dinner, uh, Churchill was visibly miffed. He went back to his car to go back to his, hotel, to go back to his, uh, his room and Scotland followed after him, said that something was wrong. And so Roosevelt, I keep saying Roosevelt, Churchill goes back to his booth, Dasha, and he is furious. He's carrying on saying, that man has insulted me. Oh, that man has ticked me off. He's insulted my honor, my integrity. And one of the British officers with him, I think it might have been Eden, who said to him, you know, you gotta remember, you are an English gentleman. These guys are peasants straight from the lathe and the plow. They don't communicate the way we do. You're an English, English gentleman. Step up and do your part on that. And so Churchill decided to do just that because he was ready to go. And then he was, actually, he was so ticked off because someone, he was carrying on about the Russians and um, someone assured him that surely his room was, was wiretapped. So that ticked him off even more. So he walked up to the, we're under a chandelier. He was pretty sure there was a wiretap. And he said as loud as he could, Russians, I am told, are not human beings at all. They are in the grammar scheme of things more like the orangutan. Now let them take that down and translate it into Russian. So that is where it was left at the end of the second day. So more not to come.